What is up my dudes, my name is Eric and I'm gonna show you five different techniques that you can use to make a picture frame. Good day friends and welcome back yet again for another build. Thank you for joining me. First and foremost, I have a sponsor for this video. How dope is that? So I'm super excited to work with MLCS Woodworking on this video. I was really excited to team up with them. They supplied the router bits and the clamping jigs that you will see me use in this video. And if you're interested in checking out their products, I will put a link down below in the description. So make sure you go check them out now. So I went ahead and made five different types of joints that you can use to make a picture frame. Everything from a standard miter joint all the way up through a half lap miter joint, which is on the fancy end of things. So you can choose which technique that you wanna use depending on your skill level, your equipment setup, or the aesthetic that you're going for. So let's get busy. So first up is the standard miter joint. Now I started off everything by milling up material for all of my sample joints. Now I use material that's somewhere in the range of an inch and a half wide by seven eighths of an inch thick. Depending on what type of frame you're making, you can vary those as you see fit. Before this standard miter, what I decided to do was use the chop saw in order to show you that you can in fact make a good miter on the chop saw. Chop saw gets a rough name. It's more of a construction style tool rather than a fine woodworking tool. That's not wholly inaccurate, but you can get clean joinery off the chop saw if you take the time to set it up properly and make sure that everything is working smoothly. Now for this specific joint, I decided I was gonna cut the rabbit on the table saw, which is a very simple operation. As long as you take the time to make sure that your blade height and distance from the fence is set up accurately and to what you want. Now in gluing up a standard miter joint, I wanna talk about a technique called sizing. Sizing is when you seal off the end grain pores of a piece of wood by using a glue amalgamation of sorts. What I tend to use is just a mixture of yellow glue and water. I tend to thin it out by somewhere in the range of 30 to 50%. I brush on that glue solution and let it dry for 15 to 20 minutes. And while it's drying, I create something that I call gluing blocks. I'm sure they probably have a technical name. The technical name very well could be gluing blocks and I just made that up on the spot. But anyway, the point is, it's just two triangles that I glue onto the miter pieces so that I have direct clamping pressure. So I just cut these two triangles out over on the chop saw and then adhere them to the miter itself by using the painter's tape and super glue trick. Essentially, I just put two pieces of tape on both faces and then CA glue in between those two pieces and press them together and let that dry. And then from there, you just glue as normal. So I paint on yellow glue, clamp the two pieces together and let it dry for somewhere in the range of four to eight hours. And after that, you have a super strong joint that is perfect for small frames. If you're doing anything in the standard picture frame realm, this joint is plenty strong. If I'm building a table that's going to a client, I'm probably not gonna use this joint. But if I'm doing a picture frame that is just going to be hung on a wall with a piece of glass and paper in it, this is plenty strong, so don't fret about that. Now on to the splined miter. So for the spline miter, I actually cut the miters on the table saw which is normally how I would cut a miter. Just make sure that you take the time like anything else to set your saw up accurately. Make sure that you have a good combination square or a digital bevel gauge if that's what you prefer and set the saw up accurately and cleanly. Now when cutting the spline itself, make sure that you reference the outside face of the frame against the fence for both pieces. And also make sure that you're using safe techniques to cut the spline. So what I'm saying is don't be like me, be safe and don't be a chucklehead. Now the spline thickness is just going to be the thickness of your blade. In this case, I have a standard thickness, 1 8 inch table saw blade. So my spline is going to end up being 1 8 of an inch thick. And again, I cut the rabbits on the table saw just because I cut both of the miters at the same time, doing the same setup, taking the time to get it right. And then you have an accurate rabbit. Now, just to show you a variety of ways to glue up these joints, I used a corner clamp on this joint. I did not size these joints because that spline is creating a strong long grain to long grain glue contact. And the only extra step on this type of joint is to pair the spline flush. Now I cut that off with a saw for the most part and then we'll come in with a chisel or a block plane and pair it down. You can do that on the outside very easily. On the inside corner, you do have to use a chisel to make sure it is flush. 
but you do have a nice decorative element and you end up with a super strong joint. Joint number three is the half lap. Now the half lap is a very straightforward joint. You're just removing half of the material off of both faces and then putting together so that they overlap one another. The trick to getting a good half lap joint is making sure that you have a spare piece of wood that is milled up to the same dimensions as your other ones so that you can set up the saw accurately. Now, I did make a mistake on this one because I just wasn't thinking and I was just doing things very quickly. And you see that I set the stop block to the inside of the blade. And what this did is it set the shoulder of the piece one eighth of an inch too far away because I didn't account for the thickness of the blade. So don't be a chucklehead like me and make sure that you set the shoulder to the outside or the far side of the blade so that you're not adding an extra eighth of an inch to the length of your half lap. Now for the half lap, I cut the rabbit at the router table for a couple of reasons. One, to show you a different technique, but two, because I needed to create a stopped rabbit. On the top overlaying piece, the rabbit can run straight through that piece of wood, but on the bottom, if I run the rabbit straight out, you're gonna see it on the end grain. Now, here's another place where I was a goofus because I failed to inform MLCS that I needed a quarter inch spiral upcut router bit and so they didn't send me one. So I used a old beat up straight quarter inch router bit. You will see that in making the cut with a quarter inch straight bit, I got a lot of tear out on that rabbit, which you can hide because it's on the back of the picture frame, but it's not ideal. Now, after I cut the rabbit at the router table in order to get a good clean result visually and so that a piece of glass could fit in there cleanly, I had to go in and square up that rabbit. It's a simple operation. All you have to do is mark your shoulder with a square and a knife and then pare down with a chisel. Now gluing up a half lap is super straightforward. All you have to do is put glue on both long grain faces and clamp straight across the joint. I used a spring clamp here. You can use whatever clamp you have necessary. Just make sure that that shoulder is all the way closed and you got a beautifully clean joint. Joint number four is the half lap miter. This is where it starts to get fun. So this joint starts off the same as a standard half lap. You have to cut the shoulder to half the thickness of the wood. From there, I set my miter gauge to 45 degrees and I cut the bottom shoulder at 45 degrees. Then I treat this like a standard half lap again and remove all of that material. So removing the stop block to make sure I have a nice accurate cut. Then all I have to do is make sure that my final cut lines up directly with the bottom shoulder and it should carry through straight to the top. And cutting the rabbit at the router table is exactly the same as before. I had to make a stopped cut for the bottom piece to make sure that you don't see the rabbit poke through the top and then squared it up with a knife and a chisel. And gluing up again is very similar to a standard half lap. Just make sure that the shoulder on your miter closes properly because otherwise it'll ruin the entire aesthetic of the joint. But this is a really fun joint to practice if you're trying to up your joinery game a little bit. It's not super complicated once you wrap your mind around it. And you might fall in love with this joint kind of like I did because it's just fun to create these joints. All right, finally, it's time to move on to the actual picture frame project. This frame is for my neighbors. It will house a piece of stained glass, which is a little more than a half inch thick. So this is kind of a deep frame and it's consequently a deep rabbit. So I wanted to use the rabbiting bit from MLCS for this, which is a nice big one inch tall bit, which can cut up to about seven eighths of an inch deep as well. Now the benefit to using a rabbiting bit like this is because it's so wide, it creates a nice clean joint because the cutting circumference is so big. And even at three quarters by half inch, it created a beautifully clean rabbit. Now, while I was making this frame, I was just looking at it and it was just a big square and it was just kind of boring me visually. I wanted to add something to the piece. So I decided to create a bead and add that to the frame itself. So what I did was I milled up quarter inch material at the table saw, and then I took them to the router table and rounded a bead profile on there. So I just used a scrap piece of wood as a pressure piece. It creates a barrier between my fingers and the router bit itself. So it's impossible for me to run my fingers into the router bit because the router bit is covered by the featherboard. Then I just gave them a light sanding and I assembled them to the frame by using yellow glue and had some CA glue or super glue to spot tack them, which acted as a clamp as the yellow glue dried. I gave it maybe 10 minutes to rest and then took it to the bench to scrape off any excess glue that had squeezed out with a card scraper. 
Now again, I used a chop saw to create this joint because I wanted to prove to you all that you can do this even in a real project. What I do in this situation is I make my cut very slowly, then I set up a stop. It's a super rudimentary stop. It's just a piece of wood that's clamped to the table. And as I make this cut, you'll see me cut down, wait for the saw to stop, and then pick the saw up and remove the piece in order to avoid any flexion of the blade against the miter that I just cut. Now assembly of this frame was super simple because MLCS sent me their Merle clamp which is just a band clamp that has different adjustable brackets on it. So I have four brackets on this piece, so clamping up a square is really easy. I could take one off very simply and glue up a triangle very easily. I could add four more and glue up an octagon super simply. You could put on as many as you like and glue up a dodecahedron, I suppose. I don't act, is, I think that's a 3D shape, isn't it? However, if you've ever tried to glue up a square frame like this, you know that it can be tricky. It can be done with some of the techniques that I showed you earlier. However, it's not easy to keep everything square and aligned and keep all of those miters closed. So using a band clamp like this with those adjustable brackets made it really simple. Now once the frame had dried, it was time to put in the keys. Now the keys are very similar to a spline, except for the spline runs the length of the miter, whereas the keys run across the miter. So you can insert them after you've glued up the miter. So I just have this jig that allows me to cut these keys very simply. And I put the frame right on the table saw and cut the keys out. So I cut my splines to about five eighths of an inch wide. And I just cut them into triangles in order to save some material, but you can do it in squares too. It doesn't actually matter. Just make sure that you brush glue on both of those faces to make sure you have good long grain to long grain glue contact on both faces because that is what's giving this joint its strength. And then I just tap it home with a little mallet. And once the glue has had a chance to dry, it's time to flush up those keys. So I just use a saw to cut off the bulk of the waste. And then you can use a block plane or a chisel to flush them up to the frame itself. You could even use a block and sandpaper if you so choose. Doesn't actually matter how you do it, just get it flush. So friends, that is five different ways that you can make a picture frame, all the way from something very simple to something more advanced. So just go play and make something. Continue to challenge yourself and continue to grow. Find some time to relax and just go make a thing in the shop. So there's, there's just all kinds of reasons to make it. So just, just go make things and be happy and make the world a better place. Now again, I wanna say thank you to MLCS for sponsoring this video. It's super dope that they were willing to invest in me as a creator. So I will put a link to all of the products that you saw me use in this video down below. So go check them out. Maybe like shoot them a message and be like, hey, super dope that you sponsored Eric. Love to see more of that because that would help me out. Also speaking of helping me out, make sure that you subscribe and hit that little bell button and leave a comment down below if you want to. If you want to stay up to date on what I make and go check me out on Instagram, that's where I tend to keep things up to date. And friends, I will see you in the next video. Be warm and well fed. Peace. My alarm just came up on Google alarms to remind me that Thanksgiving day is tomorrow. Guys, I, I know Thanksgiving is tomorrow. Now gluing up a half lap is super straightforward because all you have is two long grain to long grain. Oh, here we go.